What a bitchy! This is part two of a two-part video on this Fiat 500, Fiat 500L. That's the uh, the bigger one. And uh, in the first part, part one, link in the doobly-doo, we took out the injectors because they were all leaking carbon out of them like crazy. And uh, we didn't put them back in again because we're now going to do the timing chain. So we proved in part one that the timing chain was rattly, just by putting a microphone on it. And uh, the thing, this, this engine just sounds like a bag of spanners when it runs. So yeah, we didn't put the injectors back in again because, you know, it'll just make it easier to turn over and stuff. So that's the only reason for that. So we'll just do that last and then build it back up again. We have a hell of a lot of stuff removed. Probably don't need to remove half of that to do those injectors, but I just took them all out of the way because there was a hell of a stuff needed cleaned up all in there. It was all bogging. So, uh, yeah, we just did that for the sake of it, really, just to make it a nice area to work with. So this engine is a 1.3, and in this car, this Fiat, it's, I think it's known as a multi-jet. So this engine is uh, Fiat Powertrains, and GM there uh, on the right hand side. So this was like a joint venture or something like that. So you find this here engine in Vauxhall's courses and they call it, they bought it a 1.3 CDTI. And uh, you'll also find it in Suzuki's as well, Suzuki Swifts or whatever it is. Now this particular one uh, is a wee bit different. Sometimes you won't see the turbo sitting, looking at you just there. Uh, on the older ones, the turbo is on down, you know, and that turbo isn't there. And I did mention it in part one that that means to get this lock and tool into this camshaft, you need to take this turbo off. Now, the uh, a lot of the instructions and guides and all that I see, they just tell you to take the whole DPF off and all that will carry on. Well, I'm not going to do all that because, you know, it's twice the work. Your typical locking kit that you see in the market for the 1.3 CDTIs is this sort of carry on here. So it's a pin with a spring on it, and there's these uh, bios here with uh, springs there for the two cams. We're only going to lock one cam in this one, uh, in this video, in this occasion. So yeah, the only thing, this video isn't really going to be a how to. It's not how to on doing a timing chain. It's just sort of hints and tips and, you know, things that you can do to overcome problems and all that sort of carry on. So we've already taken the sump off and that's the pickup pipe and uh, I've taken the harmonic balancer off and uh, a couple of our carry on bits and pieces. And this is uh, a DPF here and uh, we'll have pipes, you know, differential pressure sensor pipes and stuff like that. So earlier versions of this engine won't have all these pipes and stuff, you know? So that's what makes them different. And that's why the turbo is a way up at the top it's mounted at the top as opposed to it would be down low on, on earlier versions. So some versions you pin the crank at the bottom here. There's a hole just there and uh, you sort of pin it vertically. So that's why I'll just get myself in the position. That's where there's a spring in that. So the pin will go up in through there and then you sort of hold it. You tie it onto a bolt or something and that spring keeps it in position. Some versions have uh, you know, it's up in here. Where are you? See where I have that bolt sticking in? So it's beside the crank sensor. And you can see the crank sensor there, it's hidden in the dark. But that bolt is in the hole. So yeah, I'll maybe just uh, spin it around and show you that hole. And the reason why I have a bolt as opposed to that pin. Well, reason number one, the procedure says, you know, you have to take this DPF off. And uh, you can get the sump off, and there's a big bracket here as well, the gearbox, by the way. You can get the sump off, no problem, with the pickup, with that pipe sitting there like that. So I've just split the exhaust, there's it there, hanging there, you know? And uh, yeah, so this pin that you get in these kits, well, it doesn't go between those pipes. And uh, you see there's a bit of an angle? Well, you know, that's not gonna go in straight, so it's no good. 
But that's not the only reason why I'm not using that pin. So I've spun the engine around a wee bit just to show you. And that's that hole there. Now on some variants, as I said, it goes in from the bottom and goes into that hole. And it's an AM6 hole, it's a 6mm hole. This is an AM8 hole and it takes an 8mm pin. Now it is neat, so when you get it up around to the side there, it needs to be spot on and you might have to rock it to get it in. But it's M8 and that pin that's in that kit is M6, so it's no good. So with this wee bung here out of the rear inlet camshaft here, so it's the same as that by air when it's in there and I have a camera on it. So I'll let you have a wee look at that and see if I can hold this here. So I don't know if you can see that or not, but that is not exactly central. And that's because we have a stress chain. So the locking pin will not fit into that. So you see the bottom sort of horizontal line there? It needs to go down towards, you know, into the hole a wee bit more down the way, you know. So the locking pin won't fit in that. So the exhaust camshaft here. So the cam wheel is here. There's only one cam wheel driven by the chain. And that's driving this camshaft here. And in here, there's two cogs. So that cog there is spinning clockwise. And then that is geared to another cog in the end of the inlet camshaft. And that then drives that the other way. So it is a wee bit confusing. So that cam there needs to go a wee bit more, I think. So it needs to go down the way. Now this one here, we'll have a wee look at this bung which we'll, ha we'll have out, we'll have that bung there out on the exhaust beside the turbo. And uh, let me see if we can get it in the shot. We're on side camera now, so this is going to be actually upside down. So this is going to be, like, this is going to be a wee bit confusing, but you have to sort of trust me a wee bit. So if I look at the driven camshaft, so this is the one with the driven chain, we can see the same sort of thing. So you see the, the horizontal sort of line at the top, but this image is upside down. So the horizontal line at the top is, you know, it's only a couple of mil, but that, the, the locking tools for the camshaft will not go into this engine. So we can see right away that this thing is sort of out of time, very, very slightly, and it's because the timing chain is, uh, it's too long, you know. So my M8 locking bolt is in, as I said, and the cams, don't really line up. Now they're very, very close. And by the way, oh, I see, if you don't see the notch at all, you know, it means you're on the wrong stroke. So what I've done is I've tip axed the flywheel here, a tooth of the flywheel to the casing, the gearbox. So I'm going to move back. You can see that. So this is just for our reference. Didn't need to do this. This is just to demonstrate how far this is out. So what we're going to do then is lock the cam, get the cams in the position and see how far this is out. We'll remove our bolt, our crank locking bolt that we're using, and we'll, we'll see what the crack is in. Right, so I've moved the crank, I've taken the, the bolt locking pin out, and I've moved this so that it is in a more centralized position. And I'm pretty confident then that that, that thing there will uh, fit now. So that's that tool in. So these wee wings won't uh, turn because the flats are in the notch in the cam. And uh, it doesn't actually fit in that far, but you can hear a wee click, you know. Right, uh, hopefully you can see this. The exhaust is a wee bit in the way. So with our cam locking pin in, there we are. One, two, three, four, four teeth out on the flywheel. I'm only using those teeth for reference. That's a starter ring gear teeth. You know, I'm just using that as a reference point. Just put a wee tip axe mark on it just to see how much the flywheel had to move. And the, the reason why it, se it seems a lot now, uh, well, it is a lot, but uh, you know, the crank has to rotate two times for every one rotation of the camshaft. So I have to move that a good bit for to get the camshaft to move, you know? So it does seem like a lot, you know? 
So what I want to do, there's another caveat here. I love caveats, don't I? You can also have this lining up or one of these cams lining up and the other one not. Now, I'm not taking this turbo off. I'm not able to get that tool into there because of the stud and the turbo being there, you know? I can hardly get a, a tool in to take the wee bung out. But anyway, but I'm happy enough. I'm going to look at it on a vigil with the uh, bar scope. And as I said, these camshafts are geared here. So there's a big cog in the end of it, big cog in the end of it, and they're messed in the middle. However, those cogs are not keyed. So I had an occasion that it was a broken belt on a 1.9. Very similar sort of setup to this engine here. And it smashed all the rockers and all that there. But the camshaft, one of the camshafts was out of, the t out of time with respect to the other one. And it had spun uh, because these aren't keyed. And it was just a case of loosening the bolt at the end of it and, you know, timing it up again. You know, getting the two locking pins in. So if you can get the two locking pins in, by all means. But on this occasion, I'm happy enough just to do this with the one, you know, and just a check then, you know, to make sure this is uh, this is central position, you know. So if this had a broken chain, well, we'd be taking the cam carrier off anyway. And, we, you know, you tame, the, tame the, the thing up, the two cams up with this removed. So that doesn't make any difference then. But, uh, you know, just another wee thing to keep in mind. Caught me out one time. And here's another thing about these tools. Now, these are, you know, replica tools or whatever it is off Amazon. I think I got this kit. But uh, you see that wee bit there? That wee bit is cut off the end of that. So that used to be thicker, this wee uh, twisty bit, you know? And if you don't cut that wee couple of mil off, it doesn't fit past the end of that manifold. So that's, so that's to say, that's to say if you, well, I don't know, take the end of that manifold off, uh, whether there's uh, better ones in the market or not, I don't know. And the other thing is, what you tend to find, or what I have found, this is my experience, with a lot of these aftermarket tools, they make them the specification, and that's fine. But then the next thing you do is they electroplate them. They put some sort of plating on them, you know. And what I found with these ones is that this was just a wee bit too neat. So even though on the vigil the gap was perfectly central with the hole, this still wouldn't fit in. Now it doesn't go in very far. It only goes in a couple of, like, five mil or something. It doesn't go in the whole uh, notch of that. That would be like maybe 10 mil there or something. It doesn't, it just catches it like there, you know. But uh, this, this here is 10 mil. And I failed a wee bit off there and I failed a wee bit off there. And I made it like nine and a half mil, you know. So uh, that's what happens with these aftermarket tools. You know, they, they coat them and then they're a wee bit off sometimes. And the doubt somebody will say, hey, you're buying a cheap rubbish, uh, you should buy the proper thing then, you know, it'll fit all right. I have a lot of locking kits and anybody that does a lot of time in belts and a lot of time in chains will already know that. Anyway, moving on, these things here are flywheel holding tools. Now, the pins, this pin, M6, this bolt, M8, which is the pin that I'm using for the crank in this case. They're really only positioning tools. So they, they just hold it in position for you, but they don't actually hold it. You know what I mean? So things like this, now these are out of different kits. That there, you can buy that separately. Laser make it, CD make it, it's about a tenner. That there, I think I bought that on eBay separately. I think that cost me a fiver. Draper make that. Now, I got this in this one kit, but I don't think you can get that anymore. This company here, uh, I don't think it exists anymore. And then that one there is out of an kit. So, what was the point of all those, you may ask? Well, mainly I use these for, um, you know, if I'm putting flywheels on to hold them so I can tighten the flywheel up, even when I'm putting clutches on, just to, just to hold the flywheel, you know. So you use a bolt in the gearbox, or a bolt hole in the gearbox housing, you know, and you mesh it with a starter in gear. Simple as that. And it keeps everything stable, 
And in this case, we have a crank bolt to loosen off and that thing is going to be very tight because all the gear wheels on this engine are floating. So they're not keyed. So any, anything that they're floating, uh, you know, they're relying on the clamp and force of the bolt to keep it from slipping. And therefore they're torqued to buggery, you know. So there'll be about 250 newton meters or something when this bolt was installed and the crank, uh, this is the crank and the camshaft, it's the same on this particular engine. So there's a lot of Ford engines like that and all that and they're not keyed. So anyway, I'm probably going to counter hold this anyway because uh, you know I have a counter hold and there's no problem. There's holes there. I can counter hold it no problem. But what I've also done is I've held the flywheel. So my positioning pin, let's call it that, is in. So we know the flywheel is in the correct position. And I've just stuck a bolt. Because uh, through the, the housing there, the, the bell housing, and because we have a flywheel exposed with all the starter ring gear, I'm going to use one of my, uh, one of my wee teeth uh, holding tools. And it's really, like in this case, it's going to be like, you know, a double belt and braces type of thing, you know? So if my counter holding isn't very good or something, then this will save me. Because if you put a load of torque on that pin up there, on your positioning pin, and you bend it, you'll not get it out. And so this crank bolt is left hand thread. So I have my counter hold on. I also have my uh, holding tool and my positioning tool. And once you loosen this, you've basically lost your timing if you know, you're having your crank and you would have to position your crank like. But the, uh, once you do this, your timing's off, you know. Jesus Christ. Tape. Change the plan. Break our part. Jesus. That should be us tonight. Just less. So normally we would support the engine of the sump, but with the sump removed here, so you have to come up with something else. So it's supported there. What is that? That is the drive shaft um, carrier there, which is bolted to the engine, and then that's the actual engine block itself there, just behind the uh, AC compressor. So pretty happy with that. And uh, there's the sump there. Anywho, now's the time to check your ancillary components. Like, you know, or you could, you could have done before this, you know, give that clutch pulley and that alternator a bit of a, just a bit of a spin back with your hand like that. You know, make sure it's not locked in reverse, you know? And the other wee thing as well is you see these bolts here that hold the mounting to the casing. You know, this engine is solid now. So no movement whatsoever. So it's a good time to crack those bolts. That's these ones I'm talking about. Not necessarily those ones. Just crack them, you know, quarter of a turn, whatever it is. Because these will be tight, you know. So that's okay. But here, one of these is very, very close to the chassis leg. One of these bolts. You know, so if I put, that's a standard socket and it's only 15 mil, 15 millimeters. So it's not a large head size of the bolt, you know. 
So, and we can't get the ratchet in. Now you could put a 15 mil spanner on it and double the spanner up and do all sorts of crack. But I'm gonna show you what I do anyway. Make it easy, you know? See these things here? That's three inch drive. That's a half inch drive. But they have an external hex. So that's 15 mil. And it's this uh, that cheap brand, US Pro. Right there. So not really out there. I don't know, can't remember how much they are. Uh, you have a look on eBay or whatever it is, you know, you'll get those, I'm sure. And, well, their impact as well, shallow, but it converts, because the hex is on the outside, that's now 22 mil. So we can use this, this is a US Pro aviation spanner. So we'll put that in that, and we'll have, you know, a shallow drive driver. And look at like that, baby there. And this here, that's a, a 22 mil Fatcom. We could, we could use that too, then, you know. But this one, this aviation spanner is a bit, a bit longer. Okay, so I'm ready to take this timing case off. I've all the bolts out. I've left that wee one there in just loose at the minute. A couple of things to consider. Now, this is gasketed. But I am expecting this to have maybe a bit of sealant on it, and it will be sort of stuck on. But other taming cases that, you know, are held on with sealant, you need to be very, very careful. It is dead easy, and you might think, ah, oh, who the hell would do that? It's dead easy to miss a bolt. So I can tell you that I have done that. Uh, so I had a Nissan 1.8 or 2 litre, uh, doing a time chain on it and there was a recessed bolt away down in the middle there was that much dirt on it that no matter how many times I looked and looked I could not see another fastener holding it on and I bowled away at it tried to praise it and praise it thinking it was the sealant that was holding it and it cracked so I have done that and well a lot of guys if they're honest I would suggest would maybe admit to that you know I don't know. You need to look from below, from the top. There's normally there's a bolt down. Let me see. If I look from the top, there's a bolt directly below this one in there. Can't see it from here. You know? The other thing is, normally on most time cases, there's a place where you can sort of praise it off. So you don't want to get your screwdriver or whatever it is and ram it down, you know, in there and just half away at it. So it actually gives you, normally now, most of them uh, will have something like, let me see if I can get you in here. So there's one there. You see that wee place there? There's a wee spud, you know? And they'll probably be similar, opposite. So if I have a way look around the other side, there we go. So there's a wee spud here and a wee bit there. So you get something in and you can, you know, you can tease it. And there'll probably be one, there's another one down there. And let's see it. See here? A wee ear, if you want to call it that. You know? And there's one on down, further on down. Let me see. That clip's clipped into it. You know, that clip holder's clipped into it. That's another one. And there'll probably be one opposite that. So down where the water pump is. So zooming in a wee bit there. Maybe a bit shaky, but you know, so those are just a few wee considerations. And all this comes with experience, you know. You don't read this in the book, by the way. So you get whatever it is your parent till in there and you give it a wee go on. Now you see if it's not gonna come, check your bolts and then check to make sure you have all the bolts out because it is very, very easy to leave a bolt in. Maybe not so much in this one because they're all around the circumference, but there's, the, there's ones that have bolts in the middle, you know? Now, what's wrong with this picture? So, 
I have seen personally, now personally now, that that hooky bit of that guy there, you know, snaps off and then the plastic bit, you know, slides down into something. And she doesn't have rattle when that happens. I have seen that myself personally. So I get a lot of comments on the YouTube when people say, I've seen this and I've seen that. And whenever you interrogate them, it actually turns out that what they're actually saying is, you know, they've seen it in another YouTube video. They haven't seen it themselves at all. So don't believe everything you see on YouTube or the internet. So anyway. That was ready to skip. Right, well that's everything removed. Clearly uh, I can't reheal that and uh, it's dead easy to get the wee pin in now. That uh, I can get, get that wee bit of movement. So as I said, I think I already said, this is floating, this is floating. So whenever we took loosen this, that was able to make, you know, that turn and we were able to put the pin in correctly then. Dead easy. Uh, Hardest bit of this, or the most time consuming bit, it's not hard, like but the most time consuming is cleaning everything up, you know. And uh, I'll just show you this. This is on the Amazon store. Now, I got this I got a very good pal who also does a YouTube channel, Johnny Speed Shop. He's originally from Northern Ireland, he now lives in America. He sent me this thing here, made in the USA. Can you see it? Don't know where folks are not, right? Super Scraper, it's called. and. It's got, you need to watch when you're taking this wee cap off, it's sharp as. It's got like a square tip on it, you know? And it's it's amazing. You know, you see an ordinary scraper with like a blade type thing, you know, you, you run the risk of digging into it. Cause that's square there, a rectangular, like, you know, you can just go along it and uh, dull down a wee bit, I think, but uh, with, with use. But that, you can get that laser tools make that, uh, in the UK and Ireland and uh, it's on the Amazon store. I'll see if I can see the number of it, the laser number, and I'll put up here now. Right, any other things to consider? Right, well, this wee oil pipe here has these wee bolts in it. Now, these bolts are, you know, oil control bolts. So the oil goes up that pipe and uh, lubricates this thing, you know, lubricates the chain with that wee bay there, you know. So there's a, an oil passage in the back and it goes up like that. So it's feed and return type of thing. So the bolts are like wee banjo bolts, you know, there's a hole in it. Don't know, again, don't know where you can see that on the camera. But yeah, so <laughs> you may say, this may sound very silly, like, but if you accidentally swap the over with an ordinary bolt, and you put an ordinary bolt in there, which will fit, you won't have any lubrication to that chain. And I haven't seen any kits that actually give you replacement bolts. The kit that I have there has all, uh, all the bolts of the day, cam, crank, and all that there. The new uh, crank seal, which I've already installed, that's the old one. And uh, yeah, but there you go. Um, Torx for all this stuff, Torx backs. That's, that's even a wee bit more confusing. Because depending on what you read, it's, they're, they're kind of different now. You know, you need to use a bit of common sense. I'm gonna take sort of mid ranges here. So there's, you know, because Opel and Vauxhall use this engine and Fiat use this engine, you know, you, this is why you were getting sort of different torque specs depending on what, you know, you look up. And different, uh, different data uh, facilities that I have or show slightly different uh, torque specs. They're, they're basically all the same, you know, but Fiat and, uh, and Opel tend to show different specs here, you know. So the, the Fiat one on the, on the crank will be an angled job, you know. I think that's one that I've seen, 220 to 240 or 230. Well, that's clearly the same thing there. That there is different, because that's 50 plus 90, and then it's saying here basically 50 plus 75 on the left-hand crank. Uh, the other variations are 108 to 132, 135 to 165, 120 or 150. So <laughs> I'm going to take like 130 or 140 out of that. And the other thing is any M6 bolts, some things say 9, some things say 10. That's basically the same. But M8 is 25 and 
crank pulley uh, over bolts is what they call them, which is you know the wee, the four that go around the in the harmonic balancer. One of them says one of the information say twenty feet to twenty and twenty five uh, for another one, which is the same. But okay, uh, yes, the the only M eight is that that I can see is that by air. That's the only M eight. All the rest of them are M six. Uh, yeah, this here I've laid out, so you don't get that with this kit now, but. Uh, this is separate, but this separately. This is this uh, Victor Rains anthracite. So this is the grey stuff. See, once you use this here, you won't use any other type of RTV. You know, it's it's a lot denser, sort of thicker sort of stuff. You know, so uh, only a couple of quid dearer than ordinary RTV. I think that was seven pound for that uh, tube there. And as far as I can tell, that's basically it's it's a similar it's a it's a similar to OE as I can uh, see. So anyway, what we'll do, oh, I, we'll see how elongated this chain is. So after I've cleaned this up, this uh, timing cover, I've noticed, well, there's a slight wee bit of damage, but that's all right, perfectly usable. It's very, very minor, but it just shows that this chain has been moving about. So there's a wee bit of damage there. And this is this is going this is on the untension side, you know. So that's where it's going to be the slackest. It's not tension. And there's a bit of damage there. And there's a wee, there's a, a witness mark there where it's been touching, you know. But for sure here and we got here at the back of that screw but uh, yeah this is another wee thing as well uh, nearly forgot to mention it but uh, I'm not sure why this is now but there's a couple of the procedures that I had a wee scar through you know before I did this job and uh, it, both of them state put the, the wheels on with the writing on the outside so the you know if there's any markings on it right and sort of facing you if that makes sense so we'll have a wee bit of writing on that with that bga kit that i'm using and uh that's what it says uh not sure why well uh, is there a slight ellipse in that wheel i don't know whether there's or not i can't really see anything really but that's what it says but just one last wee thing before i, I reassemble this just to let you know this so see these, see the way it's assembled, see these wee sort of horizontal lines, you know, where that's mating to that. The same on here, the horizontal line there. Well, and let's have a wee look up top. I'll get you up top here. And the same sort of thing, maybe see it better. So that horizontal line there, and the same over here, and then where the head meets the block. So there, they can be, you know, that's a track for oil to migrate out, you know. So you want to get a wee, a wee tape to sealer, not too much, just on the, on that line or either side of it and what have you. So whenever you do disassemble this, you'll find there is a taste of sealer on, uh, on here, you know, that you need to scrape off. Okay, so we're all assembled. Tighten that bolt there. I think I've done 140 Newton meters did of that. And double check the pin fits no bar. The lower pulley on the crank there is floating. So, although the crank is held, pinned and held, so we're grand to pull this pin on this tensioner. And the, the tension will be taken up then on the lower, the lower crank pulley end because it can still move, you know. So we'll pull that out. Like so. So I'm jab. The one last thing to do before we put the cover on is we we'll drown this in oil, and it's all going to drip down the bottom, like. But at least it'll be uh, it'll be wet. Let the oil run down the gauge, you know. There are companies that make sort of like a 
more sol solid sort of lubricant, you know, like a grease, you know, a semi grease type thing, you know, and uh, for this very task, but this is what I do. Right, time and case, time and cover, whatever you want to call it, is on. And this is important, this bit, you know? So if you, if you don't listen to anything else in this video, you need to <laughs> listen to this one here. So this time and cover, all the bolts are on, but they're, they're only hand tight. And this, I'm, allow, I'm allowing it to move. Like that, you know? The reason is that whenever you put this bio here in, into here, that will then centralize on the seal. So when you stick that in, you know, so you need to, that timing case needs to be able to move if you put that in, you know. So we better oil around there for your new seal if you've put a new seal on it. Otherwise, if you just go ahead and bolt that up and then put that in, you know, that's going to be out of position and it's going to wear that seal out. And it's also a good idea, you know, to give this bolt a bit of a tighten, you know, not the full torque, not the 230 or 240 Newton meters or whatever it is, you know, give it a bit of a tighten to seat that and you'll, hear, you'll feel it sort of, you know, pushing against the, uh, you know, the, the cam wheel on the chain so it sort of seats it, you know. And I was happy enough to do that, and I just did it with my ordinary ratchet, just by feel, you know, because I have that thing in, the flywheel, and I've now it out, because I have fully torqued it. And, uh, yeah, I forgot to mention, I think, you know, it's a good time to check the pickup there, obviously, but uh, this thing had leaking injectors, but I didn't expect any carbon in the pickup, because the design of this thing is such that, you know, it shouldn't, uh, the carbon can't really get into the engine, it just comes out the top, you know, at the top there. So, I've already checked the timing tools, like, but, you know, it's just dead on there. And we'll just put the boroscope into the, uh, into the front one, the one that I can't get the tool into. All right, so there we go. Let's see what that looks like. Perfect. So that's it with my, the pin and the crank and the hole in the crank, of course. So it all ends up. Rotator two times and that's it. Now you might say to yourself, you know, what if it was off? You put that timing case on and, you know, as you can see, I've taken my, you know, my support devices away, you know? So uh, you've, I've done a, a right wee bit there because I was confident that that would line up, you know, because it was locked here and it was pinned and I had the wee pin in the cam and all that, it'll carry on. However, it's not the end of the world because if it was wrong, you know, because I don't want to get around here. Wait a second, I'm on my back. Uh, yeah, so this, this floating uh, crank here, you know, so if you if you were right if you were wrong for whatever reason you know if it, if, it, if uh, the cam tool didn't fit in or something or we bit out or something you could loosen this off again you know and uh, pin it up again and then give it a you know if if something moved when you were count you know your counter holding wasn't great or whatever but as I say I sort of recommend because the flywheel is exposed there's nothing stopping you. And that's a wee modified one I did, just so it meshes easier, you know? So uh, there's nothing stopping you from, from uh, double locking, you know? Well, that's us up and running. Took a wee bit of crank in there, but that's to be expected. So we're just running out with the airbox off at the minute. Uh, just to inspect our injectors that we just put in. So, yeah. So just in case you're doubly wondering why I had all that off, well, getting the fuel filter housing out of the way, it opens that sort of corner up. And uh, you see that tube in there with the red stripe on it. 
in there. A lot is the, uh, you know, the scuttle drain. It's in there, and it's just all completely blocked up, so we could see it through the through the vents there. So just to clean all that up, it was block solid. So let's see now our taming chain. Good bit quieter now. The airbox back on again. It's, it's, uh, you don't hear it sucking in the air. So, anywho, maybe got some uh, something out of that. So, you know, the timing chain there. You know, locking, holding the flywheel rather than just locking it. Uh, you know, that sort of stuff. The principles of what I'm trying to get across there. You can plant the nearly anything. It doesn't have to be a specific engine. You plant the any sort of timing chain, you know, centralizing your, your sealer on the casing and stuff like that, you know, and uh, stuff like that. You may get a few wee tips out of it. Anyway, let me get something out of it. Many thanks for watching, as ever, and all the best, and 